Green Jolly Green, this is Sandy Six. Uh, Roger Jolly's, uh, where are you at? I'm actually going to have to make this quick because the uh, uh, 405 is about 1,600 pounds of gas total. I guess uh, the both survivors are pretty bad shape. Uh, Jolly Six, Sandy Six, Sandy, what's the deal there now? That's, 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 that's not a bad way to earn a living. <laughs> no. So, on to your next mission. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. Yeah. I wanted to just wrap that up. Yeah, we had a, a an NKP when it was Channel 89. That was a TACAN channel. Mm -hmm. Each base had a different number, which was a TACAN channel. And they, they off that TACAN channel, that that's what was used for navigation purposes, the the distance and the and the heading. Well, when we came in and saw the zero eight. Um, 0906089, we knew it was a bad area. I mean, you just look at those numbers up there. That meant uh, 090 degrees for 60 miles out of Channel 89, which is NKP, straight east, 60 miles. And Where did that take you, roughly? We're right in the McGee Pass. Right, I was right, going right to say, right I was thinking Magia it was McGee Pass. Pass. Yeah. So Could I you mean, tell folks what McGee Pass was like from your perspective? Well, yeah, McGee Pass was a it was it was it was the entrance to the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Laos for one thing, and it was a series of trails. But on each side of the each side of McGee Pass were these high karst outcroppings that were filled with caves and um, anti-aircraft guns. Uh, it was more than one trail. It was a, it was a series of trails, you know. So we they they blow up. This trail, but they'd still have these trails over here, and they'd repair these trails, you know. And so it was a major cho choke point. Yeah. In the Ho Chi Minh Trail, but it was confined by some horrific terrain. Those karsts. Yeah. yeah. One of the gentlemen that was an A1 pilot uh, that was performing a rescue there said uh, during his SAR it was like flying an air show in the Rose Bowl. He said yeah, it was that tight. Oh yeah, yeah, and it was. You, we had, we had helicopters come back. They had holes from the right side to the left, from the left side to the right, from the front to the back, from the bottom up. You know, so it was like it was like going through a gauntlet. And uh, you know, and the, there were times when they would come in, you know, do a spiraling descent into the into the uh, locate the survivor's location. You know, and generally they try hide you behind a karst, and then when they when you came in, you, you came in fast and low using the terrain as, as, as a cover, but once you got over where the survivor was, you, you were out in the open, you know. And there was a, there was a little river that, that ran through there and on Boxer 2-2, and one landed on one side of the river and one on the other side of the river. Well, you weren't there for that one? No, I wasn't. I got there after that. But okay. Wolf 06 was in the same place. Mm -hmm. And um, after uh, two days... They finally picked the guy up, and uh, again, I think it was the back seat of the pilot. Uh, one of the crew members that was uh, went in. Uh, they have the hoist operator on that one helicopter that made it in there. He uh, saw the one guy get captured, but he never showed up on any POW uh, role, you know. So the, they they have to assume that he was uh, executed. Or died in 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 you know being held as a prisoner. Yeah. You know? So yeah, that uh, Magia Pass. Uh, there was another pass. The Bankarai was a Bonalo Boy Ford, and Chapone. Uh, they were all bad areas. Chapone was really bad, and that was way further south. Uh, we lost a helicopter around Chapone in June of uh, '70. The, the whole crew went went in. Um, and that, the, on Wolf 06, that first day I flew, around 11 hours, you know, and that's, that's, a, that's a long time for, we, you know, we have refueled, but you're just drained when you get, when you get done, you know. Can you tell us how that SAR mission went when you went in on Wolf 06? The, uh, the, the one, the one that went in, the, the, I showed you the picture up mm -hmm. there, that was a Wolf, he, he was on Wolf 06, and that. Um, the second day, late in the second day, they finally went in and picked the guy up. Uh, the, but the hoist operator on the on the first day, he 
the guy came running out toward the penetrator and he said he saw the guy, he saw him grab the, the enemy grabbed the uh, survivor. And that, so they knew they weren't going to get him back. And then the second guy, he stayed uh, undercover until, uh, I think it was late in the day when they finally went in there and got him. Because they, the 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 uh, SAR effort there had the resources, they'd have fighters stacked up to 20, maybe 25,000 feet waiting to cycle in there when they were, when they were uh, trying to get this guy out. I mean, all, you know, all effort would be made to, to you know, to get him out. And, but, uh, you know, we'd orbit in the afternoons. We, just, we were on alert at NKP for, for two days. And then on the third day, at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we'd go orbit. And uh, the idea was to uh, be there and get the guy before they had a chance to surround him because their goal was to bring down as many aircraft as they could and they knew that rescue and the support aircraft coming in to help that rescue would be more aircraft to shoot down. And so generally they kept the guy there as a trap. That was the tactic um, that evolved from the, the early days we, we found out uh, as the rescues would mm. proceed, they didn't orbit as much. Right. They were just launching. Yeah. And that's... What did they tell me? Thirty minutes from NKP to uh, yeah, thirty minutes from NKP to McGee Pass. You know. That's thirty minutes for a whole lot of guys with guns yeah, to get set up. Yeah, and oh, even yeah. before you could start operating. So if you were there, um, I think they said that the uh, recovery rate was, um, if 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 they were picked up in the first hour, you yeah. were close to 80 percent yeah. recovery. Mm -hmm. But yeah. anything after that became a real battle. Yeah, yeah, the longer the guy was on the ground, the more difficult it was going to get to get him out. And then you wind up into the multiple, air, multiple aircraft shot down so yeah. scenario where whoever goes down on the ground last is picked up first. Again, yes. going with that, yes. yeah. they're not prepared. Yeah. You know, the, that the that happened on the I looked over yonder and what did I see? A big green giant coming after me. He was born one morning in the distant land. Reared in the valley so much and green. He fifty feet tall and above the trees. A big, big giant called the Jolly Green. He could cover a mile in a single stride. Towering high and all of his pride he came swiftly through the jungle of steam to answer the call for the jolly green. He would answer a call during the day or night, never fearing the enemy's might. Through shell and fire, he'd wade right through to complete the task he was asked to do. 